Hello, Bobby. Hello. 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 Hi there. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Ola. Hello, and Grandma. <laughs> And um, I want to lift mute. up that we have, we have friends that are saying good morning to us on Facebook Live. So welcome all of you who are joining us around the country. And it is 8, 8.30, so I would invite you to put yourself on mute. While, it's 8.31 actually, Anne. Um, while Roger um, plays our prelude for us this morning. See if you can recognize it. Yes, thank you. I love the end of that. And let my people go. Um, let my people in. We could be singing today, couldn't we? Good morning, everyone. I, I want the Zoom part of our family to understand that the Facebook Live part of our family is with us. Zelma is with us. Kelly is with us. Carol is with us. Karen is with us and Sandra is with us. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, and um, announcements for this morning. I would like to let you know that our hardworking roofers took the weekend off, well-deserved, and they are planning to be back tomorrow on Monday, and then they will continue their work on the TPO membrane and in the gutters, which is a big job. Um, they are hoping, and maybe we are hoping, that they will um, possibly be done by midweek. Um, so we'll see. But I understand that there is a lot of work and it's still a big job. So we continue to be patient and feel grateful that they're such a wonderful company and um, kind people 
and so grateful to be working. So we are glad that we can offer them that work. So yes, yes. Um, and at this time, I, I'm going to um, hope that you all read carefully every word and that you poke on all of the little um, links that are in the e-news to see pictures and articles and all kinds of information there. Um, at this time, I would like to lift up one of those and that is to please mark your calendars. I know that you all have very busy social calendars at this time. So please mark your calendars for Sunday, oh, I'm sorry, what day of the week is it? I think it's Monday. Monday, September 14th at 6 p.m. Before the sun goes down, we're going to have a noisy change or quiet change offering that will go toward the roof loan. And this is how we're gonna do it. You get to come to the church. We will have safety people directing you of how to circle up in the church parking lot facing the center so that you can see one another. We're going to stay in our own vehicles, except for those who are doing the safety outside. And um, there will be somebody who will come to you with one of our rain buckets and so you can be prepared to dump your noisy change in there or if you have a quiet check or bills that you have been hanging on to that you would like to add to that bucket we'll put all of those proceeds toward the uh, toward the roof fund and we will have a blessing of our roof so folks, you really want to get into this and have a piece of the pie. So please come, mark your calendars, 6 p.m., September 14th. And I look forward to seeing as many people as possible circled up. On the 19th of September, we're doing another Ferndale Food Bank Roundup. So um, the posters are getting ready, the PR will get out to the wider community, and we invite you to um, stock some bags of food and we will do a pull in, drop off, pull out. Um, so two times in one week you have an opportunity to be in the church parking lot. And, and I was um, emailed a question yesterday about the winter coat drive so i wanted to make it clear to everyone yes we are going to participate in the winter coat drive this year yes it will look different yes we're partnering with interfaith coalition and this year we will also be partnering with the ferndale food bank in order to get those coats out so uh, we have to do it safely because we're still in covid pandemic so if you have very gently used clean or new coats that will be warm for people, um, stay tuned, we'll give you more details, but this is what you can do at this time. You can wash them up nicely and get them packaged. So in a bag, a sealed bag, and then mark on the outside if it's an adult and what size, if it's a child's coat and what size. And then uh, we'll let you know how to drop those off at a later time. We're still figuring out the details, but yes, as you're going through your closets, hanging, starting to put away your summer clothes and pull out your fall and winter clothes, know that there are people who are still in need out there and we will do our best to help. All right, those are our announcements for the morning. This morning, I would like to begin by acknowledging that we gather today, those of us in Whatcom County, on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and the North Cascade watersheds from time immemorial. Please join me in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and the Nooksack tribe, for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. 
Oh, oh. Remembering as we gather here this morning that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So let us all take a deep breath. And as you're breathing in, focus on how the air surrounding you fills your lungs. And then gently breathe out slowly, allowing your breath to gently leave your lungs, moving through the sides of your cheek and out into the world. Breathe in gratitude. Gratitude that you are awake and ready for the gift of another day. Or if you're coming from somewhere else in the world, maybe you've had a blessed day. And you're getting ready to retire from the day and hand over the responsibilities of care for the earth to those of us who are just waking up. And breathe out calm and anticipate what the spirit has waiting for you today. If you're getting ready for bed, what is the spirit going to do as you speak to you in your dreams tonight. One more time, breathe in. Breathe in God's presence in this time, in this space that transcends all time and all space. And when you are ready, Breathe out adoration for Jesus and receive the gift of love offered to you when you choose to follow the way. Come, let us worship together. Our first hymn today is Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. So please take this time to listen to the words, to the lyrics, and reflect on the holiness of God. Sinful man 
thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all the work shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Thank you, Veronica. And now we'll join together in the morning prayer. Holy One, witnessed by Moses in a burning bush, may your presence be seen and felt in our gathering this morning. We promise to set aside the distractions of our lives, including the dishes in the sink, to listen for your holy voice as you speak to us through the mystery of the internet. Help us to understand that you are calling each of us into being and doing, so we may continue to follow your faithful pillar of light with hope. May it be so. Amen. And now remember, friends, that wherever you find yourself today, you're sitting on holy ground in the presence of the divine. In recognition of the blessings of being together in this moment, share the signs of love and peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Good morning, everyone. This is our children's moment that we could all learn, and so let's all attend and, and see what we find. We're continuing this morning with the story of Moses, and you'll remember that last week Moses' mother gave birth to him and then put him in a basket, and he was found in, uh, by a servant of the daughter of Pharaoh, and so he was taken to live in the palace. And he lived there, we think, for about 40 years. After about 40 years, Moses was traveling through Egypt, and he happened to come along a, um, a, a soldier who was beating a Hebrew. And Moses intervened and went on, and sadly, that he killed the soldier, became frightened of that, and buried him in the sand because he knew if Pharaoh found out that someone had killed a soldier, that uh, Pharaoh, that Moses would be in, in huge trouble. So he buried him in the sand. A day or so later, he was again out walking, and he found two Hebrews who were fighting. And Moses tried to stop the fight, and one of the Hebrew, Hebrews who was fighting turned to him and said, well, who made you the boss? Who made you the leader? What are you going to do? Kill me like you did the Egyptian soldier? At that point, Pharaoh knew he was in trouble because people knew that he had committed murder. And so the Bible tells us that Moses went out of the land of Egypt and, in fact, went to Midian. Well, I got really curious because I wasn't sure where Midian was. And so I invite you when the service is over, maybe later this afternoon, to get on the Internet and search, where is Midian? How much of a journey was that for Moses? Well, I did some research into that. And I'll give you one hint. If you and I were to travel from where uh, Moses was in Egypt to Midian, it would be the same thing as one of as us getting into a car and driving from Ferndale to Spokane and back 10 times. How would you like to make that drive? 
without a break, 10 times, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But we know that Moses did that, and I invite you to look and see just how far that was. And remember, no car, he walked. He walked all that distance. But after he got to Midian, he settled there, oh, we think for about 40 years. And as you will recall, Moses then took another trip. And at that point, we believe he was about 80 years old. So Pastor Bobby will continue with the story later this morning. My love and blessings to you all. Good morning. I'll go ahead and sing to the children. And please sing at home, um, but muted. Thanks. May the love of God fill you from your head down to your toes. May it wiggle through your fingers and dance upon your nose. May the people all around you help you live so loving grows. May the love of God fill you up until it overflows. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Veronica. And thank you, Sid, for being here and helping leading us. We know that those stories in the Bible are grounded in real people, real people who were grounded in prayer. And so I invite you to join me in the prayers of the people this morning. And as we prepare to engage in that prayer, if there is a prayer, and I'll be repeating this in a different way in a moment, um, if there's a prayer that is on your heart that you want to lift up this morning, I invite you at a certain time, and you will hear me giving you the invitation to unmute yourself and to share your prayers. And if it is about somebody personal in your life, I invite you to say it in a way that protects their identity because we are um, uh, we are live. <laughs> this is going out to the world, all right? So we want to protect one another as well. So with the knowledge that through the ages, Creator God has listened intently and responded silently to each prayer so let us envision that we are standing on holy ground in the presence of the holy I am in our midst. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and beloved God, with the knowledge that you hear every prayer, you know the prayers that we have included on the prayers for the people on our prayer chain this week. We lift those silently up to you, to our maker, to our prayer keeper, to our prayer answerer. Keeping our loved ones safely confidential on the prayer chain and in our hearts, I do invite other voices to unmute at this time and to offer up a broad prayer that weighs heavy on your mind this morning. I pray for those who are struggling with their mental health and have been um, throughout this time of COVID that they can find ways to not feel isolated and to um, get the help and, and assistance that is needed to, to keep, keep them going. Oh God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. I pray for uh, Mary and I pray for Vernon and for their help. Oh God, hear our prayer and in your love, answer. I pray for all the children starting school and all the teachers and all the parents who are turning into teachers. It's a fragile time, and I pray for their courage. 
O oh God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. I pray for our nation and for people who have such different opinions to the point that they are violent <clears throat> with one another and the, the racial issues that we have <clears throat> and the political issues and the uh, misunderstandings that people have. As we go into this next year, regardless of who we end up as a leader, that our nation can be at peace. Mm -hmm. Oh God, hear our prayer and in your love, answer. I pray for all the people who have been so horribly affected by the hurricanes, by the wildfires, by other national natural disasters that they get the help that they need and mm. don't lose hope. Mm. Oh God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. Mm. And for all who are grieving, grieving the way that life was grieving for someone that they love who has died, grieving the ability to connect in different ways. We pray for the healing of hearts and that we might come together and stand in solidarity, spreading your love, your truth, and your grace. O oh God, hear our prayers, and in your love, answer. Out of gratitude and thanksgiving for the divine artist who created each of us in God's own image, to Christ who embodied hope, and to the Holy Spirit who burns deeply in our souls now and forever, we lift this prayer up to you. And we ask you, O oh God, to hear our prayer. Father, Mother, Creator of all that is and all that will be, hear us now as we unite our voices. May they, follow, may they flow together with the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we pray with all of the disciples of Jesus across all time and space, saying together, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now it's time for our prayer of illumination. Holy and mysterious one, we eagerly anticipate the opportunity to get a glimpse of your presence. May we prepare our hearts in this moment as you reveal yourself knowing it will ignite the fire of love in the depths of our own souls. May it be so. And our scripture reading today is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15, adapted from the Common English Bible, with Moses to the burning bush. Moses was taking care of the flocks for his father-in-law, Jethro, Midian's priest. He led his flock to, out to the edge of the desert and came to God's mountain called Horeb. God's messenger, messenger appeared to him in a flame of fire in the middle of a bush. Moses saw that the bush was in flames, but it didn't burn up. And Moses said to himself, let me check out this amazing sight and find out why the bush isn't burning up. When the divine saw that he was coming to look, God called out to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, Moses said, I'm here. 
Then the divine said, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals because, we're, because you are standing on holy ground. And God continued, I am the God of your father, Abraham's God, Isaac's God, and Jacob's God. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the, the divine said, I've clearly seen my people oppressed in Egypt. I've heard their cry of injustice because of their slave masters. I know about their pain. I've come down to rescue them from the Egyptians in order to take them out of that land and bring them to a good and broad land, a land that's full of milk and honey, a place where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and all the Jebusites all live. Now the Israelites' cries of injustice have reached me. I've seen just how much the Egyptians have oppressed them, so get going. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I to go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I'll be with you, and this will show you that I'm the one who sent you. After you bring the people out of Egypt, you'll come back here and worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I now come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they're going to ask me, what is this God's name? What am I supposed to say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Say so, so say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God continued, say to the Israelites, the divine one, the God of your ancestors, Abraham's God, Isaac's God, and Jacob's God has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is how all generations will remember me. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer, whose truth and light continue to break forth in the world in wonderful and sometimes mysterious ways. Amen. So I have to confess to you right away that as I sit alone here in the sanctuary, even as I anticipated coming in and being alone in the sanctuary this for today, I have a real pit in my stomach. This is holy ground. I have a fire burning behind me. It's not a real fire, so don't call the fire department, please. Look. I have a pit in my stomach because it's hard to be here alone. I would prefer being here with all of you because when we come together in this sacred space, the synergy of God's presence is palatable. Sometimes the presence of God comes in ordinary moments, sometimes in those unexpected places and sometimes in the most sacred places of all. Sometimes God's presence shows up when we least expect it. God can fill us with awe and fear. God can fill us with joy and trembling, with peace and inspiration. All of these all at the same time. The truth is God cannot be contained in a box or even in a sanctuary. While sleeping and using a rock for a pillow, our brother Jacob encountered a messenger of the divine. And then the divine self, God in God's own being, showed up in the midst of a wrestling match. Out in the desert, God showed up. 
not in a sanctuary, not in a box. The Israelites encountered Yahweh, the unspeakable one, guided by a pillar of light for 40 years as they wandered in the desert. Moses encountered the holy I am who I am in a burning bush that was not burning. It was not consumed. I am convinced that Moses did not have a little machine to make paper move. Moses knew when he was standing in the presence of God. Jesus encountered Abba God up in the hills while in prayer and in meditation. Where do you encounter the pure presence of the creator in heaven, the creator who we believe lives in heaven, the creator who created heaven and earth and the infinite cosmos and promises to reside within each of us as well. We have a special treat today. Some of you have sent in pictures. And so at this time, Rebecca is going to turn on a slideshow and we'll see a few examples of where we encounter God. This is from Karen, and Karen is also on Facebook Live, and she asked me to share. She says, hang on, she would like to say that the presence of God doesn't always come like a burning bush, but Karen feels it when she's in the woods, especially in the park where she walks free to the dog down in Issaquah. God's presence is the owl peering out from the branch in the stellar jay telling her not to pick so many blackberries. There are times that God's presence is loud and clear, but usually it's gentle and quiet. And she loves to listen and watch for the presence of God. Marta, would you like to say anything else about your reflections here? Marta's screen says, a oh, wow, glory to God moment from Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. And a picture of our sanctuary um, during the Lenten season, where she says reflection. These are a few pictures that I have taken. I'll I will read what I wrote, but then I'll reflect with you too. I experience the mystery of the holy when I'm taking one step at a time, focused on breath and listening for that still small voice of our creator of the universe. Standing barefoot in the center of the labyrinth helps ground me so that I feel in tune to the omnipresence of the spirit guiding my way. And I feel the majestic presence of the artist God when I mindfully walk in nature. I took this photo up in the top right at the Vancouver Aquarium. Um, God is such an artist, even in the places that we don't often get to see. These jellyfish were huge and amazing, and they danced a beautiful um, ballet. And this labyrinth I had behind me last Sunday is in Petaluma, California. And I have walked that labyrinth myself. And this picture down on the right I took, it is um, up in the hills by Mount Baker.
Anne, do you have any more words you would like to add to the beauty and rhythm of the ocean? Just, just to say that um, I really feel connected to uh, the spirit of creation when I'm at the ocean um, feeling and hearing and experiencing the surf, the sound mm -hmm. of the surf and the rhythm of the tides. And here on the West Coast, the sun set <laughs> over the ocean. It's, it's my happy place. Beautiful. And I, I, am, I wanted to note that there are footsteps in the sand, and it looks like two sets of footsteps, like the poem. <laughs> mm, God is always with us. Trish, would you like to speak any more about your picture? When I was uh, living in California, a friend of mine and myself went out to a jetty similar to this uh, and just watched the, the waves crash against the rocks in front of us. And at one point, a very large wave came and my friend said, run. But I was so mesmerized by it that I just stood there transfixed while my friend ran. Mm -hmm. The wave came crashing over me and soaked my friend. Oh. I stayed fairly dry. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I ever since have just felt that the power of God is so present in, in the ocean. And I've written that the gentleness and power of water that can give life and transform anything in its wake. This photo symbolizes for me both the calm in the distance, providing a haven for all matter of life, as well as its beautiful, forceful nature that can forever change the strongest and most powerful elements of creation. It is here I feel closest to the creator. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kay and Fred, do you have anything to add? The part you cannot see is the eyes of the people who come to the table and receive um, the food. Mm -hmm. their, um, their gentle thankfulness and um, an understanding that God's uh, providing not only for us, but for many other people. And we're thrilled to be able to share. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thankful for God's abundant table. So beautiful. Stephanie? So Stephanie writes here, I took this in June of 2019 after my neighbor called me one morning and told me to look outside in my backyard. Early in the morning, the doe apparently had been foraging in my garden when her time came to deliver little Bambi that you can see down there by her feet. So she chose a spot under the apple tree and let nature take its course. I saw her actually eating the placenta, and she stayed in the yard all day. But by the next morning, she and her baby were gone. I still think of them and wonder how they're doing. But I feel privileged that God allowed me to see the first moments of a deer's life up close. I have to tell you, Stephanie, that gives me chills. Roger. Yeah, um, I just experienced uh, a sort of what I would call spirituality and uh, you spend four or five, six days in the mountains, um, which uh, I can't, well, I've done it between here and Lake Chelan and, and, but you just, the quietude, you hear, there's no sounds of civilization. Um, it's just the background of, uh, of critters, um, 
the, the glacier the glacier noises as they warm up during the day and the, uh, just a just a kind of a, a poem of nature that you hear um, it's just it it's just a kind of a, a really enlightening experience I think to be disconnected from from the sounds of the of ambient sounds of the world as, as we experience every day and uh, I've seen I've been with the group of say dozen teenagers going on some of these trips and uh, it, the, the the camaraderie that develops between between the, the boys is is amazing too it's just it's a, I think it's a, it was a growth experience for all of us thank you Roger <clears throat> Deanna would you like to add anything to your slide Yes, I was um, in Scotland on a pilgrimage to where the my Murray family um, left Scotland in the 1700s. This is um, the coast by Dun in Dunbar, which is east of Edinburgh. And I was walking around looking at the harbor um, where my ancestor left and it was bright and sunny and then it started raining on me, just a light rain shower. And I didn't go take cover. I just stood there in the rain and then this rainbow came out and um, it was a surprise. And it was the beginning of my, my time there, my pilgrimage uh, to see where my ancestors lived. And I feel God's presence in that kind of those moments that are a surprise and then the symbol of the rainbow is a symbol of promise of mm -hmm. God's presence with me, with all of us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dana. Cindy, would you like to add anything to your beautiful British sunset? I didn't know it was a British sunset, but a sunset indeed. Um, I find the sacred in so many places like many of you, at the, especially at the ocean. Um, but every night from my window, there is this beautiful sunset that says, pause and remember. And God is very present. Mm -hmm. oh, and we have new life in our family. A cousin had a baby and that is always a sacred event of the I am present. Yes. Thank you, Cindy. We celebrate that new life with you. Lisa, would you like to add anything? Yeah, this is a tree. Um, it's a few blocks from our house here in Bellingham. And I've, sh I've shared it on Facebook. Um, and it's just this big can't remember what kind of tree it is. I talked to the owner once and he told me, I, I don't remember. But, um, and the funny thing is it's on a, it's on kind of a side street that doesn't go through all the way. So I remember um, either walking or riding my bike by it once and being like, wow, look at that tree. And it was like, I couldn't find it again. And I kept wandering the neighborhood trying, I thought, did I make that up? Was that a, um, was that a dream? And, but now I've figured out exactly where it is, so I try to I try to swing by it whenever I can, and it's always a it's always a good reminder to me. Sometimes I'll set out on a walk, intending to to go by this tree and and to appreciate it and to appreciate God's presence in it, and then I'll get a half a block past it and realize that I've gone past it and hadn't even noticed it. And it's like, okay, get out of your own head, Lisa, and go back and look at look at your God tree, and. Um, and then center yourself and go on with your with your day. Lisa, I just want to lift up that you said that you talked to the owner once, and he said that he bought the house mostly because of the tree. And um, as you were speaking about it, and sometimes even walking past the tree without realizing it, wouldn't God love it if we would all um, buy our homes in our hearts because of a tree? because of the tree of life. <laughs> so thank you, Lisa. And this is from Kelly, and Kelly has joined us this morning um, on Facebook Live. 
and she's surrounded by God in Big Cottonwood Canyon in Utah. And she and Mike were on her way to Utah so she could see a specialist about her health. And she captured this picture, the one that you see below, Kelly, where there's a car and you can tell it's in the middle of a city and there's some chaos happening there. She captured a picture of Mike jumping out of her car to help a stranger. He started pushing the others he started pushing the stranger's car that was probably stalled and then other people started joining in he didn't think twice god's presence in helping others so thank you kelly for sending us these even as you are on the road <laughs> robin and bob do you like to add Well, we've really enjoyed our vegetable garden this year, and we've especially uh, enjoyed the wonder of small things, the tiny seeds that grow, and all the tiny insects, and we imported ladybugs, and that was really fun, and it's just, the whole thing has just been a great joy. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. And it's been five years, so I'm glad you finally got to plan a new one. Melissa, would you like to add to yours? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we both Rich and I have always loved the Oregon Coast, and um, I've always loved the song. Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? And I've definitely seen him down the coast. Yes. Hmm. Have you ever stood at the ocean with white foam at your feet, felt the endless thundering motion? Then I say that you have seen Jesus, my Lord. Hmm. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And Artis, is Artis with us today? This was a reflection from her home um, overlooking um, the bay. Beautiful moonshine on the water. And Rebecca. I feel close to God while I'm in the forest surrounded by glorious trees and when I'm around my four grandsons. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Rebecca. And so, um, that ends our visual presentation. Um, and I would like to share one more story. Peggy Rogers has spent the last month helping one of her friends who has a farm. And for many of us, we know that Peggy also has a farm. And um, her friend um, was dealing with some health issues and had to be hospitalized for quite a while. So this required Peggy to tra travel back and forth early, early, early in the morning when most of us are still fast asleep. And so I want to offer you just a short paragraph of what Peggy shared with me. So in my travels back and forth, I was able to watch the sunrise over Mount Baker and spend some quiet time in the car. And even though my old 1993 Mazda is considered an old relic to most, it got me there back and safe and sound. Got me there and back safe and sound. I marvel at the way I enjoy the early, early getaway. I might have to slip away in the wee hours of the dawn before off, more often as I found that I was able to pray with total joy and thanks, thankfulness. These are burning bush moments. Some of us find them in the mundane details of life. Some of them in the majesty of God's creation. Some of us may find the presence of God in that still, small voice that we hear when we actually sit still for a couple of minutes to listen. 
So like Moses, may we always be reminded to take off our sandals when we are on holy land and not be so curious about how did this miracle happen, but be more in awe of the great I am. May it always be so. Amen. That was beautiful to see everyone's um, places that they feel closest to God. Um, I also agree my closest, when I feel closest to God is in the ocean and where the, where the water meets the earth. Um, in this next hymn is the servant song. And I know this is really um, personal to Pastor Bobby. And uh, so I just invite you to, to listen to the lyrics and, and sing along from home while muted. <laughs> Sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a we're together on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony, born and born together of Christ's love and agony. Brother, sister, let serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Thank you so much, Veronica. It does make me have tears tears in my throat. I would like to invite Marta and Bill um, to prepare to give us some insight. And um, I am going to show us a video right now. Um, this is from Guatemala and, and I would just like to lift up in this mission moment. You will hear more from Marta and Bill in a moment. Um, we had people from our congregation, Marta and Bill and, and Kathleen and Posse, who were planning to go to Guatemala. So let's learn. What 
The Hotel Toliman has been a home away from home for First Presbyterian work teams since we started going to San Lucas in 2010. The hotel staff there has been unfailingly helpful to us. When the pandemic hit, the manager shifted them to a feeding program. They purchase, package, and deliver basic foodstuffs to 200 desperately poor elderly in the community. The video you're about to see shows glimpses of that program. Realizamos una campaña de recaudación de fondos entre nuestros clientes frecuentes y les pedimos que nos enviaran sus donaciones en forma de anticipos para futuras reservaciones, para tener nosotros efectivo para responder a esta crisis. Creo que la pandemia nos cayó de sorpresa a todos, ¿verdad? Y nos afecta de una o de otra manera a Hotel Tonimán. También, ¿verdad? Nosotros eh, tuvimos que cerrar desde el 15 de marzo. Y a partir de eso, pues, sabíamos, ¿verdad?, que la pandemia iba a extenderse por mucho más tiempo. Eh, lo que hicimos primero fue distribuir entre el staff, familias y organizaciones necesitadas todos nuestros insumos de alimento y limpieza con lo que nos habíamos preparado para nuestra temporada alta y Semana Santa. Hasta el momento hemos realizado cuatro entregas. La primera fue una donación de Prismar a través del Club Rotario Guatemala de la Asunción. Las siguientes ya fueron alimentos eh, donados o comprados por nosotros. Son las donaciones que hemos recibido de amigos, eh, clientes y organizaciones como son Habitat, EPIC, diferentes eh, misiones médicas, entre otros. El huerto ha sido una inspiración eh, para que Casa Cabal eh, promueva los huertos eh, familiares y comunitarios, que eso es lo que están haciendo ahorita, eh, para prever la hambruna, ¿verdad? Que esperemos que no sea, pero para prevenir, prever la hambruna en unos meses y que la gente esté preparada para salir adelante. Sabemos que dice la Biblia que Dios recompensa un vaso de agua, cuanto más lo que se le hace a los hijos de Dios, ¿verdad? I'll start. Um, I went to Guatemala in 2019 and was looking forward, as Bobby said, of going again this June, but we were, with the pandemic, we were not able to go. The experience, the hotel's a very nice hotel, uh, but we went out into the outlying areas where we saw one picture of a lady with a stove in the background. And we, we, these people live on very, very little. They do subsistence farming and they, I think there's, wages are probably less than three dollars a day if that so when the pandemic hit they are left without um, sources of, of income and um, the hotel is is working on on providing services for people who, who have been left with nothing very gentle uh, beautiful very gentle people beautiful country um, very very poor uh, out in the outlying areas where we, we would go and build uh, stoves so they wouldn't have to have smoke come into their house because of the pollution. 
and to build uh, better lavatory bathroom situations and and then a house for people. So it's it's a it's very heartening to see what the hotel lobby or the hotel dining room looks like now and in serving the some of the community and there are still so many people in that area who don't have the um, background or don't have the support of, of government and um, you know, some of the things we have the advantages of in our society. And Bill? You know, the, the lockdown in Guatemala is much tighter than here. They've shut down their transportation system mm -hmm. except for essential stuff. The country has no resources for medical, for instance, in this town of or city of San Lucas Tolman, 20,000 people. There's a hospital clinic the size of a small clinic here in Ferndale, and that's it. That. And so they just don't have it. Um, and there aren't the backup services. Uh, people don't have unemployment. There's no food banks. Uh, there's not food stamps. And so the community tries to pitch in. Families are posting white flags when they're out of food. Uh, and some of these organizations we work with in Guatemala, um, Habitat for Humanity has changed from building homes to supplying food. Uh, Hotel Tolman, we just saw there, uh, they've, they've jumped in and, and people who've, who are bigger customers there have pitched in funds. Uh, also, uh, San Lucas Tolman Scholars in Guatemala, free public education ends at sixth grade. And it costs $250 a year to send your child to school. And a family that's making you know, $100 a month income to survive on, it's just impossible. And so the scholars program helps these kids go to school. They've now pitched in on the feeding. So if you're interested in joining us uh, to uh, help our friends in our community in Guatemala, you could, you could and put on your check, uh, Guatemala, and send it into the church. Uh, this year, we were going to have four of us go from First Presbyterian, equal number of friends and family, and then about equal number, another eight or so from uh, Central Oregon. And so in future years, we'll have a chance to do that. Right now, the need is to feed these people. And if you want to help, uh, uh, it's much appreciated. Thank you. Marta, anything else? No, that covers it. Thank you. So- um, Can I speak, Mimi? Of course, <laughs> of course. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I was there too. I, uh, the hotel, San Lucas, Tolman Hotel, their garden is the most unbelievable garden I've probably ever seen. And uh, people who work there very helpful, explaining how they are fighting, doing everything organically. Fantastic. So uh, Bill and Marta and I, we're not the only ones who love this place. Um, I, when I was in the garden, I asked, what is this huge concrete thing here for? And uh, the guy told me that it's uh, when Pavarotti, the famous Italian singer, came there and said, oh yeah, they built that when Pavarotti came here with his <laughs> helicopter. And Pavarotti started a school there. And I think that school is still going over there. So um, I'm just saying that it's me and Bill and Marta and Pavarotti, we love this place. <laughs> Another thing is I got sick there Doctor came in, uh, we have a bunch of us were had stomach problems, you know. Doctor came in, he was riding a bike, and it, he was so good because he spoke freely. He was telling me, do not drink that. And he was saying, do not drink that Caterade. And then he explained to me what happening in your stomach and how that is not, that don't do that. That do this, this, and this. But anyways... That's my story. I love the place. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I just want to lift up how um, Marta said that these folks maybe make $3 a day 
And um, so our, if you feel moved by this story, something that moves me is, is watching the people who have been there, um, recognizing how much they do admire these people. But even deeper than that, the, the COVID virus is affecting us. And it is also affecting everyone else around the world. And we have a connection with these people in Guatemala. $3 can go a long way for a family. Um, if we're able to give a little bit, it will help them a whole lot. So um, if this moves your heart, send a check into the church, write Guatemala at the bottom, and Anne will make sure that it gets into the right um, place so that we can get it get money off to them okay so thank you all this is in partnership with habitat for humanities who we have um, partnered with on many different ways over the year is okay. there a way to send money for guatemala through the link online ah that's a good chance uh yes rebecca is shaking her head yes um rebecca can you yeah our donate um it it has some canned kind of things there, but there's also an other. And so when you select other, then it allows you to put comments in. And if you choose to do it that, that way, I would just remind you that we get um, a little charge every time you use that. So if you could just bump it up, even a dollar, it helps us. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Go ahead, Sid. Okay. Every time we gather, it is a sacred act. Offering our gifts to God is a holy act. In this moment, you're invited to offer your gift and your life to God's work, holy work in our world. And you can send checks to P.O. Box 186 in Ferndale, or give at the website or by the Giveify app. And however you give, when you, when you give, say a prayer for the mission and ministry of this church. Beloved God, we humbly offer what we have to your mission work for world unity. We ask for your blessings as you blessed Moses and Miriam long ago. And may we, may we take your blessings so seriously, we continue to do your work even in the midst of a world pandemic. And may our collective work be touched by the blessing of your love. Amen. And now for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And for our final hymn today, is they'll know we are Christians by our love. And I really pray that this is so, that the world will actually know that we are Christians because of how much we love others and we reach out and love our communities.
the God is in our land, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each human's dignity and save our pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. One more time on the chorus. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. May the great I am be a bright flame before you, a guiding light above you, a clear path below you, a compassionate protector behind you, today, tomorrow, and always. Go in peace. Amen. So from the holy space of our sanctuary, I bid you all a blessed morning. Blessings. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs>